What's going on? It's Dom. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another Dom IY video. Now today I'm going to be working on a friend's car. My buddy Mike just picked up a 2007 BMW 328i E92. This thing is gorgeous. It's got 56,000 original miles. It's a six-speed manual and very, very clean. The only problem he's having is there's a strong odor of fuel coming from the outside of the vehicle on the passenger side. Now, if you're familiar with these cars and when it comes to the odor of fuel, first thing you're going to think of is the fuel pump or the fuel pressure regulator. Now, it's weird because those components sit inside the cabin directly behind the front seats. That's right. Right in the back seat, you've got your fuel tank, your fuel pump, your fuel pressure regulator. So you think you would smell it inside, but we only smell it outside. In any case, he brought me the vehicle the other day and I wanted to confirm my thoughts on what it would be. So I took off the rear seat on the driver's side. That's where the fuel pressure regulator is. I took off the lid and then I observed that it was in fact wet and dirty. So I knew he had some kind of a leak going on and he wanted to order the part. He did so at FCP Euro. Great place for any of your Euro parts. They have a lifetime replacement policy. You can't beat that. The part came in and I'm ready to tackle this job and save him some money. I'm probably going to save him lots of money because if he took this to the dealer, that bill would be enormous. If he took it to a local shop, it would probably be expensive too, not as expensive as a dealer. But he brought it to me because I'm cheaper. Cheaper, not cheap. Now, the job to remove the fuel pressure regulator is pretty detailed, and I don't want to make this video any longer than I have to, so I'm just going to show the removal process. Once you know how to remove it, it's very easy to replace it. You do everything in reverse order. I just don't want to make the video any longer than it has to be. Now, while we wait for Mike to bring me the vehicle, I want to invite those of you that are here for the first time to subscribe to the channel, and make sure you click on the bell so you'll be notified for future videos that I post. If you enjoy the video, give it a like, and leave a comment because those elements help support the channel and I appreciate it. Now let's get this job done and let's save Mike lots of money. And here comes the 328 pulling up into the driveway. This car is super clean and very well maintained. Like I said, only 56,000 original miles. The previous owner took very good care of it. I'm not a big fan of this uh, saddle interior, but with the Navy, it looks real nice. Now, this thing's got Alcantara everywhere on the shift boot, on the steering wheel trim. There's Alcantara on the A pillar, the headliner, the sunroof. It's everywhere. It's even on the e-brake boot. Yo, Mike, you hit a home run with this buy. So the first thing we have to do here is lift up on both of the seats to remove them to get underneath. And these are already loose. I already popped them up, but I'll show you right here, down here, and here and here. There are two metal parts that fit right into this right here. You just pull them straight up, and they pop out, and the rest of the seat comes out very easily. Same thing on this side, just pull straight up. It's already loose, but you just pull straight up just like that and wiggle the seat right out. And now we can see the two areas that we have to get to. One is the uh, fuel regulator. On this side over there is a fuel pump. We're gonna lift up the carpeting right here and lay it back. And each one is basically the same. It's got four 10 millimeters on each side. We're gonna remove that cap. I pull back the carpeting on both sides and use a torque wrench to hold back the fabric there. Uh, I couldn't tuck it in underneath. So this makes it easier for me to get to the two covers on either side, which have 10 millimeter bolts on there. I'm gonna take those out.
On this side is the fuel pressure regulator. On that side, we have the fuel pump. They both have to be disconnected. And I've already loosened the four 10 millimeters that are around each side. I'm gonna lift it up. I'm trying to do this with one hand so I can hold the camera. And underneath, we've got some connections that I've got to release. This one here will squeeze. I can already smell the gasoline. Yes, I've got gloves on, of course. Disconnect that and get it out of the way. And you can see, I already opened this just to make sure that the problem was what it is. And I hope I'm still correct. It's gunky, it's wet, it's dirty. So the smell is so strong coming out of there. I'm quite certain that's what's going on here. So then we've got to unscrew this ring here that holds it down in place. There is a special tool that you can rent from AutoZone and the rings have to be removed on both sides. They both have that hold down ring. I set the camera up in here on the passenger side so you can see the connections I'm gonna be removing. And hopefully the camera's not in my way, but there are two connections down here. Let's see if I can tilt forward so you can get a look at that. Right down here, you got one connection. And there's another connection there, just squeezing the tabs and pulling it out. Okay, so we've got the two connections removed from the cap. Again, just squeezing on the sides will lift them right out. I don't want to remove these here yet, nor the one on the other side, until I relieve some of the pressure that's in the system. And I do that by starting the car. That way, when I disconnect those, hopefully uh, there isn't a big spray of fuel, maybe a little, maybe a few drops, but that's gonna relieve the pressure on the system. And I should be able to make those uh, two disconnections on this side and one disconnect on that side much easier. Let's see if I can show you that one right there. So let me start the car up and it should die out relatively quickly. Hopefully no error codes, but once I start it up, it'll just drain the fuel that's in the line and the car will stall out. So now that we've done that, hopefully it's released the pressure in the system and we won't have a big spray of fuel. So now it's a matter of removing these two connections right here. This one has some play from what I understand. It's a clockwise, it's a clockwise turn this way and press on these gray tabs down here and push it straight up. And sure enough, that came right out nice and easy. You see the gray tabs right here. So you give it kind of a, maybe a quarter turn clockwise, squeeze the tabs and it pops right out. And this one here, I believe it has a blue tab on the front side that I'm gonna press in. You can't see it while I'm doing it because my fat fingers are in the way and there it is. So this blue tab right here, just push right in. It goes in and out, just push that in and lift straight up, that releases the pressure there. And then we can move these to the side and now unscrew this cap right here. I'm gonna use a microfiber towel and just wipe off some of this dirt that's here unlike the other side that it looks like it has some wetness going on this just seems to be some dirt i'll clean that off and then attempt to take off the ring so we started the vehicle drained the fuel out of the line so we didn't have anything spurt out at us i had a very little bit when i removed this connector right here this line very easy just squeeze on this gray tab here, this gray connection right here. You squeeze on that and this slides right out very easily. A little bit of fuel might pop out, not a whole lot, but we're good to go. Then I went and rented the tool because I wanted to do this right. You know, this is a buddy's car. I don't want to mess anything up. I probably would have gotten it for my car as well. But I rented the tool. It comes in an entire kit. I'm using a breaker bar. This is the entire kit. This is the only tool part that we needed, but it comes with everything else. You see, it comes with a punch, it comes with a mallet and other tools. 
but this is the one that I got from AutoZone, cost me $100 plus tax, fully refundable when I return it. Hopefully I can get this done quickly and get it back to them. So what you do with the tool is you place it on top like this, you tighten down on these bolts so it's nice and firm. You can get an extension, like I have a short one with a breaker bar, or you can use a ratchet if you like. I needed the breaker bar because this was on there very tight. It's already loose. I did it off camera. It's nice and loose and you give it a twist and that ring on top, the lock ring will unscrew and that's how you can remove the whole assembly. I did it to both sides already. I loosened it. So now we can continue and remove the uh, regulator, disconnect the lines that come across on this side so we can put in the new one. So when removing the ring, you still want to be careful. You don't want to introduce any dirt into the tank there. So I wiped it down with a microfiber before I twisted it off completely. And then once it's cleared, you can just pull it right out like that. And obviously I'll give it a wipe down, but I can already tell that this has some wet dirt deposits on there, which was probably the cause for the smell that's going on in here, which thankfully I'm outdoors and it's not that bad. Let me put that down. Now we've got to remove this entire assembly here. This is the regulator that we're going to replace. And there are lines that are connected underneath that come out on the other side, which have to be disconnected before we can pull this assembly out. And we put the new one in, it's reverse order. You're going to feed the hoses all the way through underneath the console. It's going to come along the other side. Hopefully I'll get my son to give me a hand and reach over and uh, it make it easier to fish it through. And then we can set that in. I put a towel because I'm gonna pull the regulator out and any excess fuel, I'll just have it catch right on the towel there. I do know that I've gotta be a little careful because there's a float in there, there's a mechanism that I've gotta be very cautious with. So I'm gonna do it slowly. Hopefully you can see it uh, while I'm doing it on camera. If not, once I remove it, I'll explain what I did after the fact so you can get an idea and make sure that you do it very carefully and the right way so nothing breaks even though you're not going to use it you don't want anything to break and accidentally dropping inside and staying in there but we've got to identify what lines run across this right here this section right here i guess this is part of a float or something i'm going to pull this up I'm going to compress it so it gives it some clearance and I believe that is what's going to be the easiest way to get this out very carefully knowing which lines go where and it looks like that's the float assembly coming up looks like some kind of a float there it is and the lines are coming with it I don't want to break anything Right, so it looks like I've got, let me get this line out of here. That's the one I disconnected from the top. I love gas. So these are the lines that go under the console across to the other side. There are three lines. I've got one that looks like a brown. I've got another black one and a black one. So these three lines that go across, and I'm going to disconnect them on this side. That way I can pull it all through. And then once I'm installing a new one, I'm just gonna reverse order. I'm gonna snake them through. On this side here, I would advise push down to keep the assembly down low as far as you can. And it makes it easier to lift the ring up because this hose that's here, this line, doesn't really give you much clearance. So you can tuck it in back there or anything. So you've gotta make as much clearance as possible. And I found by pushing down on the assembly to keep it from rising up, because if I let it go, it will start to rise up. You see that? So by pushing it down, it makes it easier to clear the ring and pop it out. And again, the reason we're taking off the pump is because these lines from the regulator on the other side come underneath the console and attach here. And we've got to disconnect those so we can install the new one. I hope you can see what I've got going on under here. I pulled out this side assembly and I've got some connections under here that I have to remove. The first ones, I can't lift it up that much more. It's these down here with a screwdriver. I'm gonna have to probably get in there to pry it just a little bit and pull it out. There's one on this side and there's one over here. Not sure if you can see that. 
but hopefully when I disconnect those and I lift it out, you'll be able to see a little bit better. I've also got to disconnect this, but I'm not doing that yet because I want to have some clearance. So I'm going to do these that seem to be a little shorter. I'm going to do those first. All right. It was a little bit of a struggle, but managed to get it out. So this won't come out very far. And you've got this connector here. And all this is is just a push. You just push in. I'm not sure if you can see. Push in right here. With your thumb finger or whatever you can behind it you just push in and it releases these tabs on the side holding it against the ring there and then it slides right out a little bit of work but it managed then it gave me enough clearance to pull it out a little further and get to the two clips on either side now the way you remember you want to write it down or you want to mark it for yourself this is the centerpiece here the green cable the connector with the green wire goes on the right the one with the red goes on the left. It's actually red and brown. It's got a red and brown lead is on the left side. The green, the two solid green are on the right side. So that goes on this side. If you want to mark it, you can mark it because you're going to put them back on here. We just had to disconnect it for now to pull this out so we can have some clearance to get to the hoses that run across and disconnect them down inside the tank. So now with that clear, all I have, it's only those three connections. This is a tether. You know, it's just like a brace to hang on to it. Some people, they cut it and, you know, forget about it. I saw some videos where guys just cut it. I saw some other guys are a little meticulous and they take it out, which is me. I'm a little OCD. I, I like to put everything back in place. So with that tether removed, if I'm pushing up and I see it's holding up this whole mechanism that sits in the bottom of the tank there. And that's all it does. It just holds it up. It doesn't go very far, but it just makes it easier to remove that so I can remove this entire piece and get it out of my way. All right, so looking inside the tank, you'll see the tether is connected to the mechanism at the bottom. That's where the hoses that come from the other side are attached. I've got to disconnect those. I've got to make sure I know which ones go where and then fish them out and then fish the new ones in and get this job done. And it's getting dark and I want to finish this as quickly as possible. Okay, I also want to show you before I make my disconnections, these two rods, they go in. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm going to try to get in there as close as I can. You're going to see. You'll see it with the naked eye, but it's difficult to show on camera. You've got uh, two holes that's in part of that assembly, one on either side. Those are where those two rods go in. I'm not sure if I can get an angle so you can see one right there and then the other one is on the other side here. And that's where those two rods go in. So when you're putting it in place, you know exactly which way it goes in. You can't mess it up. So let me show you what happened in here. There are two hoses. One is a vent line, this one here. That one just right around this ring, it just has like a U connection. You just, it sits right in between it. It just pushes down on it. So you just split it open and pull it right up. It's not that difficult at all. This one was a little bit more cumbersome because you've got to get your finger in there and push in on this green tab. So it'll release the pressure and then pull it straight out. It's kind of tight. It's way down low. You might be able to get your finger in there. I use a little screwdriver to give me some guidance. I pulled it, I pushed in on it and popped right out. Now I can just fish the wires out the other side. With the old fuel regulator removed, I took the three hoses from the new regulator and used a zip tie to hold them together. That made it easier for me to pass them through to the other side underneath the console. Now it's just a matter of doing everything in reverse order to reattach the hoses, connect the wires, screw on the hold down rings, and then put the lids and the seat bottoms back on. All right, well, everything is back in. Seats, covers, vacuumed it out, nice and tidy. Car starts, I'm gonna take it around for a little spin, make sure there's no lag. All right, I finished the fuel pressure regulator on my buddy's 2007 328i. It's looking sweet, it's running beautiful. You happy, Mike? Excellent. Listen, I just hope it doesn't blow up. But if it does, hey, it's live on YouTube. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Drive fast. All right, Mike, take care.